predictive identity is the name that we've come up with for this combination of powerful new research-driven technologies that let us deliver on the promise of inclusion for three and a half billion people. One of the core issues is that the way that we do credit scores today, or even just the way that we identify who is someone that can do business with a bank, is based on really, really old technology. So this concept of a physical ID, yeah, you know, it's got our name on it, our picture, it may have some other basic identifying information, dates back to 450 BC. King Arctic Xerxes in the Tigris-Euphrates Basin gave some cuneiform tablets to the prophet Nehemiah. And that identity document hasn't really been updated very much in the last 2,000 years. But now, thanks to AI technology that we've captured from MIT, the University of Oxford, and Imperial College London, we have a much better way of identifying people. It's much more accurate, it's much more difficult to forge or hack, and it has powerful predictive components meaning we not only understand who someone is, but we also can figure out what they're going to do with their money. This leads us to the idea of a positive credit score. So for example, there are some financial institutions in Brazil that are very excited to work with us because today, we've now got the ability to look at the 80% or so of the Brazilian market. I'm sorry, I gotta back that one up. Today, we have the ability to help the 73% of the Brazilian market that right now has no access to credit get into the credit system through the concept of this positive credit score that we build on our predictive identity software as a platform. Identity is the core platform technology that we deliver in a software as a service fashion. Once you've got this much more robust, much stronger identity, we can then build apps on that platform like a credit app that is 30 to 50% better than existing credit scores that you might get from someone like Equifax or Experian. We can also build fraud prediction apps that not only tell you where fraud is happening today, but give you a window three months into the future as to where fraud might happen. One question that comes up sometimes is this question of user privacy. People say to us, well, you know, if you're using things like mobile phone technology or payment card transaction technology, is that somehow not good from a personal privacy standpoint? We spent a lot of time thinking about privacy. In fact, uh, our researchers were integral to the thinking that led to Europe's GDPR, which is viewed as the global gold standard for privacy and personal data protection. We handle it in two ways. First and foremost, user consent. We're not forcing you to use this technology. But if you want better security on your bank accounts or your other personal information, if you want the ability to get a loan where you might not be able to get a loan before, then you can opt in to be considered by this analytic engine and have that data used to help you with a healthier and better financial future. The other way we handle privacy is with aggregation. So for some of our models, particularly around things like fraud and crime, we use aggregated information. So it's not one person, but it's an entire group of people, hundreds of people that are all pooled together. So that, it turns out, it works out to be about zip plus four in terms of its resolution. That's considered to be good enough in terms of protecting personal privacy, so we can't really identify the individual, but still fine enough resolution that our models are able to generate useful predictions. We've got a powerful team that we've brought together to solve this problem of building better identity software for the world that then can deliver better credit and fraud systems to include three and a half billion people. Professor Alex Pentland is my co-founder. He's founded over a dozen businesses out of research at MIT and is someone who is viewed as a global leader on big data, artificial intelligence, and digital privacy. He currently advises the board of AT&T, the UN Secretary General, the European Union, and others on questions like how big data and AI can be used to better the lot of humanity. You'll note that I've got my UN Sustainable Development Goals pin on for this interview. Sandy is very involved with the use of big data to measure the SDGs. I'll also note that SDG 16.9 is the identity goal. The UN Secretary General has said that everyone on the planet needs to have an identity by 2030, and technology like ours can help reach that goal. 
Our other team members include Alex Lipton, who wrote the Oxford Handbook of Credit Derivatives and is viewed as one of the foremost authorities on quantitative analytics. My chief analytics officer, Tom Fox, worked with Alex previously on Wall Street and has run multi-hundred person quant groups, but still rolls up his sleeve and codes in R and Python. My head of engineering, Ellis Wong, ran engineering for Carrier IQ, a company that worked with all of the major telecom carriers and now is owned by Nielsen. It's how Nielsen measures mobile. Ellis previously has built an engineering team from scratch into a global leader in advanced software, and he's eager to do it again. 